I'm Patrick Bailey with IQlist.com. Today is April 9th, 2022, and in this video, I'm going to be going over a 3D printed articulated dragon, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, so I'll just show this. I mean, you, people, there's a lot of videos out there right now. I'm kind of late to the party in a sense, but I'm really liking this design. So you can just kind of get a close up if you want to see all this cool stuff. I've made a bunch of different colors. Uh, now, before you dive into this, this is one of those prints that people, uh, the, the person who credit charges you for, and we'll go over that in a bit. I think it's a little under four dollars right now. But as you, if you've seen some of my videos, I don't mind paying for really good prints, and I think there should be a good market for that. And I think it's fantastic. And this articulated dragon, and you can see, it is really, really a neat thing. A little, the legs move. Oh, he's done a really brilliant, wonderful design that prints really well. Um, I had one issue with it, which I'll probably go over here in a bit and show you how to overcome that. But overall, I think this is a great design. I can't wait to go to the homeschool conference this year and kind of show it off because this is a this is a really good design you can show people that can convince them the value of 3D printers and what they can do. Uh, and also, we're starting to enter this age where there's enough good 3D printers out there that can do a real a good enough quality. And people are dump, who, who can are jumping into good design work. I can design some stuff geometrically. I cannot design something like this, you know, where you have some really good artistic sculpting and stuff. This is not my forte, but I'm glad there are other people who can do this. And I think this is a well worthwhile. It's really cool. Uh, one word of warning: I haven't gone. I haven't gone, and I, I think you can do it. I tried to print it half size. Kind of worked but didn't work very well, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. But unless you're gonna get a little, I think it might work with a smaller nozzle. If you get a smaller nozzle size, I think you probably can get a smaller one to work. But I haven't fiddled with this, and this is good enough for me right now. And I think it's a really good model. So with that, and it just, it's just really cool. It's a great design, a great idea. Well worth the four bucks to show off some stuff. But with that, let me go over the numbers and more details. Okay, so first, here's where you get it. I'll put a link in the show notes. It's at Cults 3 d or if you just search for Articulated Dragon, chances are you'll find it. And you can see right now he's charging $3.87 for the file. More than reasonable. It's a really good design. I think it's really neat. Now, with that, if you get... Oh, another thing where I got hooked onto this, I found this video, and there's lots of videos on YouTube, so you can go find a bunch of them. Uh, but this is the one I caught. It, it shows, you know, it might be a really good idea to get some of these multicolored filament. I think it would do a really keen job, which I'm thinking about doing myself now. Uh, but with that, before we go over the numbers, let me go over uh, the Prusa slicer and one thing that you might want to do with it. So here I drop the dragon on, and when I'm doing a print, I like to rotate it in such a way that looks kind of cooler. So I kind of rotated my dragon like this. If I recall correctly, I guess we'll see in the in the time lapse video I did here. But uh, one problem I had with this guy was I needed to slow it down the first layer. Now, I like to be simple. I like to keep things, you know, just simple, push a button and let it go. I'd rather it just work simply. So, um, but, but in this case, we got to do something a little more advanced. So what you can do is you can uh, right click on this dragon and you can add a modifier. If you go down here and say, add a modifier and I'll make it a box. And for those who aren't familiar in the slicer, I can add this modifier. It's not an actual physical box. It's not going to print it. But I can say anything that's in contained in this, in, within this box, so I could go you know, do part of his head here. And I can change the size of the box, which I'm going to do here in a second. Um, anything in that modifier, I can change the rules. So I could say, it, within this box, run slower, which is what I'm going to do. Or I could actually tell it to do a different infill. So you can have, you can really focus on things if you want to. But here, I'll just take this box. I'll come down here. It looks like it's already done it for me where I can. But, but also, this box is. Oh, is this attached to the file? Yeah, it's, it's underneath the STL file. Let me see. Well, you know, I might have done that wrong. I think where I have it right now, it'll apply to everything. But let me, let me change it. Let me, let me delete this real quick. If I choose the dragon... Oh, no, that was correct, because here's the dragon. You can choose that object and modify that object. Okay, I, that, that was correct. I just didn't want to... If there were multiple objects, I didn't want to modify that. Okay, so we'll say... Okay, where's my brain? Add a modifier, there we go. Add a modifier, make it a box. Make sure this, in this case, I wanna not scale it. So I wanna have it different sizes here. So, come on. Okay, now it's thinking. 
So I'll just do 200 by 200. And now the layer height, I probably want to do probably a 0.25, maybe a 0.3 and then kind of cover everything and then over here I got to hit this little button over here drop to bed boom and so now you can see it's going to affect just a few layers here and even though I'm doing 0.15 usually the first layer is like a 0.2 if I recall so I might want to do I might want to do a couple layers so 0 0.2 0 0.35 let's just say that 0.35 and make sure it drops to the bed and then what I'll do is I'll just say Right click on this and say, I want to add a setting, add a setting, speed, boom. And for me, I just generically choose everything. It'd be nice if there was a button that just said, hey, make it all half speed, just like I would on, you know, if I was running it manually. But I can choose all this and everything has different speeds based on what it's doing. Oh, looks like I have ironing chosen right now. Uh, no, I don't, Never mind. Okay, so I'll go here. And I'm kind of wondering half speed or even less, so I'll just kind of divide things by two or three. So I'll say 10 there, 10 there, 10 there, 20, you know, 15. I'm not really doing this really super scientifically, but you could, if you want to get really crazy, get precise if you wanted to. And just slowing everything down, but it's going to be slow on those layers. Now if I slice it, I'm going to get, it's going to run overall slower, because it's going to run a little slower on those layers, but that's what I want. I want those layers to go slow because there's a lot of little tiny parts and it doesn't, for me, it didn't work very well uh, going at normal speed on those first layers, but once I slow them down, life is good. And as always, if I haven't mentioned this before, I use a glue stick. So I put a glue stick down there and that holds things pretty nice and with a slow speed, it worked really well. Okay, so with that, let me go over the numbers. Oh, you know, I was fiddling with colors earlier. That's how it looks Give me a second here. It looks a little confusing because I was, I'm doing another project here. Let me remove those so we look a little more normal. There we go. Boom. If I go down to the first layer, you'll see there's a lot of little things that could go wrong there. But with this, it worked, it worked really well. So these have turned out really well. Okay, go over the numbers. Okay, so here are the numbers. So it took 18 hours and seven minutes to run. It took uh, 16.5 cents with electricity and it weighs 0 0.076 kilograms which is a dollar 52 worth of material based on twenty dollars per kilogram I may have to adjust that as inflation keeps going up uh, but well I'll go that in a second so total price for this a dollar 69 to print so not, not not a bad value it's pretty cool I like it it's always a good thing to show off a good thing to give to people I think it's gonna be a big hit showing this off at the homeschool conference this year um, and just to let people know, uh, when I do things, and I say $20, $20 per kilogram, someday I may move that to 30 but I do it in 20 not 25 or 22 just to make the math easier. So if I say something, you know, you know, if it weighs whatever, and I say it's a dollar, you know, a dollar, I'm using $20. If you're using $30 per kilogram, all I could do is take 30 divided by 2, which is going to give you 1.5, and then multiply by the number I have, so if I said a dollar, you'd say a dollar fifty. So you can adjust. I did my numbers like this, so you can adjust it rather easy, easily to whatever you're doing. Uh, also, I think I'm using ten cents for my per kilowatt, which is another thing to consider. Even though electricity is a minor part of this, if you're in, I mean, some place in the world where they're spending thirty cents a kilowatt, so you may have to triple that price depending on where you're at. But even so, electricity isn't much of a factor. So depending, on, you know, what you are, you can factor in what I say. Okay. Let me wrap this up with a reminder. 3D printing is an adventure you're on. You can develop your skills and knowledge and take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this. You can teach others. You can make amazing designs. So, engineer on. As I was producing this video, my Prusa Mini broke. So expect a repair video on that soon. On another note, Britt Scott left a comment on my last OpenSCAD video asking why I don't use modifiers for debugging in OpenSCAD. To which my brain said, what is that? So I had to go look it up and wow, they are cool. It's a neat way to make a part of your print transparent while modeling it in OpenSCAD. Thanks, Brett. And you can expect a video on that in the near future.